This video is on aggregation and using the group by clause in SQL. And uh, it comes in three parts. First part is uh, just the introduction and getting the idea behind aggregation. Second part has to do with null handling and counting of records. And then the third part has to do with multi, uh, multi level or hierarchical grouping. So let's get started. We'll use the Northwind database. And uh, we'll just do a simple select from the products table. And here we have, uh, with no where clause, we get a record here for every product in the products table. So we have 79, but could be a million, could be 2 million, could be 5 million. So, um, but we don't always want to see the details of every record. So sometimes we'd like to see a summary of those records. So consider this where I'm getting an average, a single number that summarizes all of the products. So I'm averaging the unit price across all the products. And the way to think about this is that I take all of those product records and I enter them or I put them into one group and then I ask something about the group. And this is called aggregating or aggregation. So what else can we ask about this group? Well, here we get the average unit price. We can ask minimum, maximum, number of products, to, so to count. Uh, we can sum up numbers, so add them together. Figure out the standard deviation and variance of things. We can also include expressions in an aggregate function. So notice that I'm summing here uh, the unit price times the units in stock. and the way to think of this is if I've got a product that's five dollars and there's a hundred of them in stock then I would multiply the five times 100 and say that the value of those products is five hundred dollars then I would sum and add up those across all of the products for all of my products total seventy four thousand dollars in inventory that's the value of them so in the above examples, we were aggregating over the whole table, but you can limit the aggregation. So here I'm using the WHERE clause and calculating an average, but I'm only including products that are in the categories 2, 4, and 6. Um, you want to think of this happening first that the WHERE clause occurs. So in other words, products that are not in these categories are eliminated first and then the average is calculated over the remaining records. Now consider these two queries that are running together and the top query is getting the the average price of the category 1 products, second one is getting the category 2 products. So I'm, I'm calculating these uh, for each category and of course with 57 categories, I'd have to 57 queries, and I'd have 57 tables with one cell in each of those tables, but it, it sure would be nice if I could get it all into one table and have something that looks a little bit like this. So I have a category ID on the left, and then I have the average unit price next to the corresponding uh, category ID. So here it is. Here's how to do it. And uh, the the parts that are the part that's new is this group by. So the group by is telling the database engine, "Hey, I'd like for you to arrange these uh, products into different groups by their category ID, and then show me the average for each of those category IDs." So notice that each record here represents a group of record of products not an individual product so the logic is take all the category 1 records put them into a group take all the category 2 records put them in a group and now answer a question about the each of those groups so again group by category id you know, arrange the records into a group and then calculate an average for each of those groups. Now, once the, the grouping is established, see this group by clause, in my next query, that group by clause hasn't changed. It's the same as it was above, but now I can ask 
a lot of different numbers or a lot of different things about uh, each of those categories. And notice that these all correspond to the ones in the previous example. So for category one, the minimum price is 450. Uh, total number of units in stock is 559, standard deviation. So um, it's nice that the grouping is independent of what questions I'm asking about the group. And once I establish the grouping, I can ask many different questions about each group. So how to think about this and visualize what's going on. So here I'm going to select all the categories and order by the category ID. And this is still from the products table. So, so what I see here, excuse me, what I see here is that I have two products that have a null category ID. That's one group. And then I have, uh, beginning in record three here, three through 14, I have 12 records that are all in category uh, one, right? So I can see the groupings as I scroll through the records. Now, um, let's start to group these records, and notice what happens is that now those two records that were category null become one record that represents those two products. Uh, the second one, uh, there's one record here for the group of products that have a category ID of one. So each of these nine records that have come back each represents a group of products that have a common category ID. Now you can do this with distinct, but that's for another video. But now let's start to add some, some attributes that we're interested in. And again, I'm maintaining this category ID ordering on the left, so I can still see that these two records, one and two, will become a, um, a group. And, um, and I'm putting these other columns in just to see something uh, human readable. but. Um, my, my goal here is to get, for each category, the average unit price. So let me get rid of these middle ones, these middle columns, and I just get the category ID and the unit price. And just f uh, so I know what to expect, these two will combine, and then I'll get the average of these, so I'm hoping that will be 550. So I'm going to take this and convert it into a group by. And here's the new piece. I have an average around the unit price, and I have this uh, statement or this clause, the group by clause, and now I get that. So there we go. I got my 550, right? So um, usually you have to do those two changes together. I have to add the grouping and an aggregate function, like an average, at the same time. So a common idiom, in, at least in the English language, is to say things like, uh, I'd like a count of records by category ID, or the average unit price by supplier. So this, this piece, the by category or by supplier, um, usually means that they'd like the category ID on the left. So a by category means put category as the first column and sort it this way and also group by the category ID. So let's see a couple of examples. Let's say a, a manager comes and says, I'd like the total value of inventory by category ID. And here's what they have in their mind, is that the category ID is on the left column. It's ordered by the left column. It's grouped by category ID, and that the sum of the uh, value is in the second column. So another example, show me the lowest unit price of products by supplier. Supplier ID is in the first column, supplier ID is the grouping, supplier ID is the order by, and there's the minimum in the second column. So um, just to kind of point that out again, supplier ID in the first column, supplier ID is the group by, supplier ID is the order by. And then throwing in a couple of joins to see uh, more human readable. Um, now I have company name on the left, lowest unit price on the right. And uh, this piece here is important, but we'll cover that in another video. And that's an introduction to the group by.